everybody, and welcome to Let's Look at Seven Grand Steps. So I'm continuing in kind of the tradition of the Kentucky Route Zero Let's Look at I Did It. I'm taking a look at some of the other IGF nominees, perhaps not even nominated for the grand prize, but nominated for some weird categories throughout it. Uh, I have discovered some interesting games, and this is one of the ones that I've been spending a lot of time with over the past, well, morning or so. I've put about an hour, an hour and a half into this so far in one sitting, and I'm enjoying it a great deal. So the premise of Seven Grand Steps is basically... It's almost like a board game, but it kind of feels almost like a casino game, like a slot machine or something. Uh, but you are in control of the lives of your ancestors, essentially. So the premise of this game is that it's trying to connect modern life to life starting in the Copper Age, essentially. So we're going to start playing as uh, a distant, distant ancestor in the Copper Age. And we're going to try to basically allow them to succeed in a life that is full of peril and fraught with potential disaster, but also potential rewards, you know, standard human stuff, love, children... Brewmastering, etc. It's kind of hard to explain. I apologize. I was a little bit inarticulate there. Uh, but you're going to understand why once we get in here. So what we got to do is like grab a token. Uh, actually, we do not have to grab a token to start with here. That's just for the first time. So we're going to name this the Northern Lion Family. Every time you start a game, you start with a new family. I should mention, by the way, this is a work in progress. This is just a beta demo right now. The game is set to come out in spring 2013. So a family with this name already exists. Overriding them will erase them forever. That is fine with me. Alright, so then we will transition down to our board here, and this is the interface that we're going to deal with for the entire game, and I'm going to do my best to explain just what the heck happens here. But first, we need to look at this. Golden discs clattered and shattered into beads. The family twisted a thread into the future, stringing beads along it, sometimes retreating to refresh. Crocodiles clawed the wheel into motion. Newlyweds woke to the living world. Nuzzling, they contemplated. For what would their family? Alright, so at the very start of the game, we get to choose uh, what kind of family we're going to have, like what our overall game aim is going to be uh, for the game as the Northern Lion Clan, essentially. So we can climb in society to live high upon the wheel. I believe that has to do with like wealth and status. A legend of discovery to write upon the wheel. This would make us like scientists, engineers, inventors. Or a heroic legend to challenge the wheel, which I think is going to mean that we're going to be brave and, you know, conquer adversity, basically. Uh, but why not go with uh, a legend of discovery? You know, knowledge is a very noble pursuit. Now, uh, we are going to begin playing here by getting a discovery. Anyway, now I'm going to explain just what the heck is going on here. So whenever we start the game, we start with two characters. So we have Ket the Neighborly as well as Selk the Maverick. So this is husband and wife. And we can look at their traits right now. So we can see he loves his wife and she loves her husband. This is not only good to keep the relationship alive, but it's good uh, for other benefits that I'll talk about a little bit later. It's definitely possible to have a partnership in the game uh, where your partners do not love each other and you don't nearly uh, reap as many rewards. So we can see that uh, his chance of making tokens, which I'll talk about, is pretty low for masonry, pretty low for brewing, and very high for irrigation. And for her, very low for irrigation, very high for masonry, and very high for brewing. This is fantastic, so they make a good pair together. So the way that we play this game if we're going to describe uh, the kind of general gameplay, these crocodiles represent death, basically. If any of our tokens here, which this is Ket and Selk, uh, if these guys fall into the crocodiles, they will die. Now, whenever we want to have a turn, uh, what we do is we take, we click this button, uh, and it rotates the board counterclockwise, moving this square into the crocodile, so these guys would die if they don't move. The way we play, actually, is by making tokens. So the way we would move forward is by playing a token into one of these slots, which would move us forward. Let's say we had a masonry token, and we played it on Ket. Then Ket would move forward to this spot, which is masonry. Uh, you just move to the closest spot represented by the icon on the token. We can also make tokens uh, by using ingots here, and that's what we're going to have to start with, I think. So we're going to have Selk make an ingot, and this should have, or make tokens from ingots. And what this should do is have her uh, walk back into these guys, basically, back here and get some tokens made so we can start playing. So we're just going to use that on her, get some tokens made, and we might be able to do the same thing with Selk as well, or with Ket, Selk. I, I'm going to mess up the names, like, constantly here. Anyway, so now we have some tokens, and we can uh, end this turn and start playing the game, basically. So those uh, shadows are our neighbors, and our general aim for the game is going to be to collect beads. So collecting beads are th these things right here, and that will fill up this meter of discovery. And when we fill this up, we'll have kind of like a quantum leap forward with respect to our family status as well as, uh, you know, the age as a whole, because we're starting in the Copper Age right now. Now, we are very close to the crocodiles, obviously, so we're going to move forward as far as possible. In order to do that, I think we should play the irrigation token on our husband, which will have him... Move to the next irrigation square, which is where his wife is, and then buy something called the Impetus of Love, he should move forward to the very next irrigation token past that. Let's see if that works. Indeed. 
Now, whenever your uh, heroes are on the same token as one another, uh, not just the same one, but like the same icon, uh, they can attempt to have a child. So we can do that right here and see if we can have a child. Even though we don't necessarily have the resources to support it right now, uh, we did indeed get a child. So we can also feed tokens into the child, and this will improve their statistics. The child doesn't get an icon, uh, but basically we have this nurturing period where we can just feed it tokens and choose what it's going to be great at. Because as you can see right now, brewing, irrigation, and masonry, this child is basically uh, absolute garbage. But we are going to use impetus of love again, basically. Oh, we got crowded out. Never mind. We're probably going to make some tokens next time, but first things first, why not just uh, make our child into a dope-ass brewmaster? So by dumping tokens into our children, we actually make them better. So in this way, the game kind of represents how the parents hold influence over their children and kind of develop them into future uh, generations. So this child, Hamadi, will eventually become the person that we control when our husband and wife die out. Anyway, that's going to be the end of this turn, so we're going to rotate ourselves ever closer to the crocodiles. Having children is a necessity, but also a, a terrible, terrible cost sometimes. Because eventually, like, sometimes you'll have, like, husbands and wives that just can't stop fucking, and then you get, like, seven kids, and you're like, well, I don't have resources to support seven kids, so sorry, only one of you is gonna have a chance at, uh, you know, life in the next generation. Which is a shame, but also it's really cool that the game can actually, uh, you know, make, like, approximate that kind of, like, conflict for resources that makes it so interesting. So yes, our guys are in love, they had a kid, that's what I mean. Uh, sometimes when they touch, the honesty's too much, no, they just have a child by accident. Which is something that I did not want to happen at all. Um, we're gonna move... We need to get out of here is the thing. But we also need to make more tokens. So we can actually have... Uh, let me think about this. We have some tokens now, but it's not much. I think we should irrigate our two children here just to give them an increased irrigation skill. The thing is, we have to make a, like a great leap forward to keep our generation, like our existing generation, from falling into the crocodiles here. So we can move like one of us forward with the brew token. But the thing is, that that's not really going to push us that much further ahead. It might be in our best interest on this turn to just uh, use the, the ingot to make some tokens. You can make tokens with strangers, but usually you only get one out of it. Which is risky. So this is going to put Selk very close to death here. By the way, these neighbors can also make tokens with us, which is great because it, it feeds into our tokens. Uh, but additionally, they can take our beads. So we are competing with our neighbors for this kind of prestige here that is going to feed into this. I promise I will get some beads eventually. So... Uh, how do we get out of this awful predicament we're in? I think what I should do is we're gonna move her to the irrigation square. We're gonna move him to the irrigation square, which should move him even further, again, due to impetus of love. Uh, I don't want to have a kid, but sometimes this owl will show up and just be like, Hey guys, uh, we've got a story to tell you. So Ket the Neighborly is gonna have something happen to him here. I think there's voice acting for this. There is not. The children silenced their hunger, but lean years drew their cheeks in. The soil was turning salty, and wheat stalks were thin. Okay. Ket can beg the priest for supplemental food. Sometimes on these, you'll have other options, kind of like FTL style. Uh, and again, there's no right or wrong decision on any of these. Uh, but, you know, different ones will give you different rewards and different risks. So we're going to beg the priest for supplemental food, and we're going to see what happens. The priests open their granaries to display the bounty of the river god. They ration just enough to keep folk alive while sacrificing much to the gods and their own stomachs. I'm not sure if that's good or bad for now. But in any case, uh, now we can, again, basically brew up our units here and then we'll rotate again the problem is that we seriously have to make ingots i haven't really or I, we have to make tokens i haven't really talked about the way you make tokens so far uh you put the ingot in the slot and this makes tokens but the way it works is that as soon as you use the ingot uh the penalty is that you get pushed backwards so we're gonna move back to our neighbors here or if our wife was there we would move back to our wife when you produce tokens with your wife you make way more tokens uh but you also make tokens based on the number of neighbors that you're making tokens with I apologize if that sentence doesn't make any sense. Hopefully you'll see it in action here with uh, Ket the Neighborly, who should make tokens. Uh, he got crowded out from that last square, so we only made one token, unfortunately. We should definitely move his wife forward with the brewing token here, but she got t crowded out. Uh, we're not going to make a kid, and I don't think we're going to actually invest in our kids' lives here, despite the fact that they look pretty goddamn lean here. Uh, when you don't invest in their lives, uh, like you don't put a token in them on a turn, they play and they generate some skill... Uh, but it's not nearly as much as if they got tokens. Similarly, if you don't m use anything on your turn with one of the adults, uh, they just reflect on their life, and this gives you one discovery point, or one legend point, I think they call it in the game. So hopefully we're going to be able to pick up some beads fairly soon, because so far uh, we're, we've kind of ended up in a very impoverished situation here, and I've never actually been this crowded out for resources before, so I'm just trying to see what we've got. We, we can only move forward, really, with brew tokens. If we use an ingot, these guys will fall into the crocodiles, but there's no real way for us to move forward apart from doing that. So I kind of don't know what to do. I'm just going to move our husband forward here, 
Then on the next turn, we'll try to make uh, tokens with the wife, but we might actually die here. As you can see, we've reflected on our lives, uh, which gave us one discovery point. We also got an irrigation token. Uh, the children... Oh, I should say... I'm just gonna skip through the tutorial there. Basically, the children have sibling rivalries, or like they come together as siblings, based on the differences in how you treat them. So if you treat them well, uh, if you treat like all of your children equally well, then the ch kids will have a better chance to get along. But if you favor one over the other, like giving them more tokens, which is tempting, because, you know, it's better most of the time, I think, in this game to have like one Wunderkin child uh, that is like a master of everything, as opposed to, you know, six siblings that all suck to varying degrees of different things. Uh, but then they won't get along and they can actually have conditions that will like cause them to hurt one another or steal from one another anyway. But they, as you can see, I believe, yes, Mazrea likes Hamadi, which is good because those are our kids. Uh, we have one irrigation token. This is really bad. Uh, I'm pretty sure one of us will die next turn if I don't do something. So I've got to kind of move her up to the next irrigation token. And hopefully somebody chooses to make tokens with this next turn. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure we're just going to die. We might actually have to restart this because this has been a poor experience so far. I, I can't really do anything. I could have them both die on the same turn, I guess. Get some tokens. We have a masonry token. Oh, good. They produce another child just in time to die. Um, why don't we try to save the husband at least? So, I mean, I didn't mean that to sound sexist. It was mostly just that, uh, you know, he was the only one who had a turn available. All right, so those kids are going to play. I'm treating the firstborn better than anybody else. The crocodiles may eat. Yeah, they ate her this turn. So she's gone. But at least our husband still remains. Although, sadly, uh, he's kind of in a rough situation as well. You know, without his wife, he's not going to be able to make very many tokens. And then his kids are probably not going to fare too well as a result. I wish there was actually just a way to restart this here. But uh, basically what I'm going to do is just pump up my kid uh, as long as I can to see if potentially uh, I can make them, like, survive in the next generation. Please, somebody make tokens with me. I got no way out. The child Mesrea struck her brother Hamadi, cried and cried. After punishment, she refused to explain. Yeah, so our kids basically hate each other now. I, I can't tell if the Grrrs likes Hamadi. Again, work in progress. They, they all like Hamadi. Hamadi's a nice guy. All right, so I'm pretty sure my whole family's going to die here. That's going to be pretty bad for business. There we go. Uh, so now we have to send our child through the rite of passage, unfortunately. Even though uh, she's probably not ready for it. So this is the way that you go through generations. Is you send your children through rites of passage. Uh, usually you want to wait until the kids are much more well-developed, because then they'll have a better chance in the future generation. Sadly, this is all we've got here, so we're going to attempt our rite of passage here. Um, instead of wasting time memorizing, Hamadi raced to complete the rite. He finished the race ahead of all the other boys. His few wrong answers were disregarded. Good! Thereafter, people would call him Hamadi the Maverick, I think. Chooses a personality, it will influence tales of Hamadi's life. Alright, so Hamadi succeeded in his uh, Rite of Passage, which is great, because we might have a chance in this future generation. And step one for us is going to be finding a bride. So we're going to try to go to someone who has these, like, love tokens over them, because that means we are going to love our wife, uh, which is going to uh, increase the chances for us to make tokens. We only have one token, so we're just going to play that, hopefully fall in love with this lady here. And we'll see her stats as well. She's a B+, plus. that's probably better than we can do, honestly. Hamadi feels love towards Metetwis. So we're going to court her. How many spent months after work in the fields binding reeds together? He presented the raft to Matet Twits, but the gift was met with exasperation. She left shaking her head. Oh, man. How many tried again and again to please Matet Twits until she had the field boss flog him for disrupting her work? So I don't think we're going to succeed there. Please tell me someone makes tokens with us soon. Our neighbors got married. There's a fierce competition for mates in this game. Uh, I'm going to try to make some tokens, I guess, because that's basically all I can do. And now I'm up with this lady now. Come on, we can have a conversation, right? Matewis was an enemy. She's an A. Oh, I think she might be out of my league. But I feel love towards Desank. So we're going to court her. All right, we had got exactly the same condition there, basically. Uh, so, unfortunately, Hamadi is possibly just going to die out here completely. He's not having a good, good luck so far. Uh, there's only one lady left, which might actually be great for us. All we can do on this turn is essentially play this token, and next turn we'll try to make tokens with the girl on the Irrigation Square. Who has a heart over her head. Oh man, she moved past us. Alright, we've got some serious problems. I'm pretty sure this is going to be the end of our lives here. Which is a shame. Uh, we could play our brew token next turn. But we can't even really get that far. Yep, pretty sure we're just going to die. Let's just let it happen and we'll see what happens here. So, I'm sorry about this, Hamadi, but you basically screwed yourself. One day, Hamadi asked himself silently, Do the gods wish me to never have children? Would he remain unmarried? So we can resign ourselves to bachelorhood. 
The answer was immediately clear. He preferred to live among men. Perhaps he already had. Hominy did not concern himself with women who claimed it. He wasn't in a hurry to marry. He questioned his destiny no further. I'm basically just going to kill him. I'm sorry about this, Hominy. It's a nasty way to go, but this has been a bad round from the start. Maybe if we try again, uh, we can uh, get something going on. Oh, so we have to try with one of our other siblings. This is really bad so far. You know what? I'm actually going to quit out of the game, which is going to require, I, I think, restarting the recording. But that's okay. I'll just edit it all together. That was an incredibly failed run of uh, seven grand steps, but that's what can happen sometimes if you don't have a very good start to the game. So I'm going to try uh, again, probably with Ket and Selk, uh, and I will see you guys when I get back, uh, basically, to the start of the game again. All right, so we're back to seven grand steps. We are just going to start a new game here. Why not go with the Ryan family this time? Perhaps that will be uh, a little bit of a better luck charm for us. So this is going to be a fairly long video, but that's cool because this is kind of a... It's a strategy game, and I enjoy playing it a great deal. Why not this time? Uh, we'll do a Legend of Climbing Society, so we'll try to be rich, I suppose. Uh, and we will begin. So I'm just going to skip over all that stuff that started with us. Okay, so to start the game, we do have to create some ingots here. Or we could just skip our turn, but I think that would be pretty silly. So we're going to create some ingots and, or sorry, create some tokens from ingots and see what kind of tokens we get. We get two masonry tokens to start out. And we are going to be fairly close to death here at the end of our first turn, but we do have a wide variety of tokens, which is a good start for us. So we are going to rotate basically into crocodile territory here, but our husband and wife should love each other as they often do to start with. Uh, so we can play an irrigation token on the husband to get him out of this via the impetus of love. He didn't get crowded out, which is great. We could try to have a child. I don't know that now is the best time to do that. I think instead, maybe we should just try to move forward. Oh, I got crowded out, which is a shame, because Impetus of Love would have actually pushed me towards that green token, which would have been fantastic. Anyway, we'll skip this turn. Hopefully, people will move a little bit. Beautiful. Uh, and we should probably just try to create some tokens again by moving Ket back to Selk. So give us a couple of tokens that we can use to... Oh, we did produce a child there. So yeah, now we can... We've got a little bit more in the way of resources. So as long as we stop producing children accidentally, which, you know, sounds kind of like the plight of the world in, you know, certain situations, uh, we should try uh, to raise this child accordingly. So I think we should play... No, you know what? We shouldn't play the brew token. We should play the masonry token. Because we can save that brew token, use impetus of love, or, you know... I don't know. We'll see. Clearly, I don't necessarily know what I'm doing. Uh, where should we move this lady to? We can move her to the other brew token, and again, they might produce another child. I don't necessarily want that, though. Uh, but via the impetus of love, I'm going to play the brew tokens. Because via, via the impetus of love, next turn, I can possibly pick up some legend points. And actually start working towards uh, that discovery. Please don't take my brew points. Okay. So first things first, we're going to play this on uh, Ket. Next turn, he can make tokens for us. So impetus of love is going to allow us to pick up four legend points, which is awesome. So now we're working towards our legend. We need 100 before we can actually rank up. Uh, what, what are we going to do with this lady? Well, we're going to have her make some extra tokens this time, so we have something to feed our child. So we're going to feed him another masonry token. Maybe he will be a master mason in the next life. This is going substantially better. So, again, the, bird, uh, the board will rotate here. And with one brute token, I could actually uh, just have Ket here advance further in his career, pick up another six legend points, and that's pretty good for us. Now, we might want to move our lady forward a little bit because she's not in a very good position right now with respect to, uh, you know, avoiding the crocodile. So we're just, I'm just going to move her forward a bit. We're out of tokens, but that's okay because we should be able to make uh, at least two next turn just by turning ingots into tokens with our neighbors here. Oh, yeah, there we go. They're going to use their turns to make some with us, which is beautiful as well. We're going to make some more here. And then I'm going to move backwards and I should be able to make... Ah, uh, no, they, they crowded me out a little bit. That's okay, though. So we lost some beads, but that's alright. Uh, we want to make more tokens for sure, because we need uh, something to feed our kid as well as something to move our wife forward. So we have irrigation tokens. First things first, let's see what this owl has to say. Alright, the children silenced by their hunger. Okay, lean years drew their cheeks in. We saw this one already. Ket begged the priests for supplemental food. The priests opened their granaries to display the bounty of the river god. They rationed just enough to keep folk alive while sacrificing much to the gods and their own stomachs. I don't know what that does with respect to benefiting or hurting us. Uh, if only we had some brew tokens, we actually could do, like, um, the impetus of love and move forward substantially. But for now, again, we're just going to keep putting some masonry skill. We're going to try to make that child more well-rounded, but uh, for now, this is what we've got going on. Now, I wanted to get our husband and wife close together because now I can create a bunch of tokens by putting that ingot in there. They might have a child, which worries me. They did not, which is fantastic. Okay. So we have brew, two irrigation, and a masonry. What can we do with this that is beneficial? It might be good. Okay, if we use the irrigation on our wife, 
She can move forward, claim a few legend points here, not very many. It takes a long time uh, to move between ages. Uh, and then we can just put, let's put a, um, yeah, let's put a brew token into our son. Who is actually getting fairly strong here, at least, you know, with respect to masonry and brewing to a certain extent. And there's usually a long time between generations, so we have a long time to develop him. We just didn't see it last time because we were so starved for resources from the beginning. Okay, so again, we can have her come back and make more tokens. I think that's the smartest decision we could do right now. And this should make at least three for us. And it produced another child, which is actually unfortunate because we don't want that to happen. But alas, uh, you know, sometimes things like that do happen. Now we could... I'm going to move our husband forward again. And then we'll move our wife forwards next time. And I think we should play uh, Brew Token and Masonry Token. I want to keep the Irrigation Token so we can use Impetus of Love to really move forward. That's the balance of this game, at least in its current state. You fall backwards to make tokens, then you use those tokens to move forward as much as possible so that you don't have to spend too many tokens, and then you can use those tokens to basically bump up the, the chances of your children. Of course, the entire time, you're also trying to collect these beads so that you can advance your family name. Uh, okay, so we're going to have her move forward. I hope she doesn't get crowded out here. She doesn't. Impetus of Love is going to allow her to move up, which is great. Do not have another kid. Under any circumstances, please. We can't make tokens this time, but I will feed our last irrigation token to our firstborn son. Sadly, that's just the way things work. We do get one extra legend point because he was reflecting on his life. And we're going to get one token here. I don't know what that is. Oh, Crocodile must have eaten somebody. Okay, again, this is the tutorial about the children. The child, Kanika, attacked Enmul with a stick. She injured Enmul's arm. I hate you so much. Hopefully, he's not going to be injured for life. Because that can happen. I've had that happen to my husband and wife pair at times. So we're going to have the wife move backwards and make some tokens. This should make at least three. I think that only made two. Why didn't you make... Just have sex with a neighbor. It's okay. Uh, we're going to move our husband forward a little bit. And we're going to save the brew token for impetus of love next time. And we're going to give a masonry token to the girl. And hopefully this will alleviate the... Oh, I, wanna, I wanted to look at the owl. Please don't go away, owl. I need your support. Cat discovered a bed of clay and sold it to potters. Awesome. So we basically got a chance card there. They gave us free uh, tokens. The owl is gone, unfortunately, because I'm an idiot. Uh, what did we want to do here? He's on the brew token. We could use Impetus of Love to go further ahead, which I think is a smart idea. Although, yeah, it probably is. Don't get crowded out. She didn't. Good. Do not make another child under any circumstances. Uh, and we're just gonna, we're gonna feed into both of our children this time, because we're gonna make a lot of tokens next turn by falling back, uh, and, you know, mating, which, again, could produce a child, but I hope it doesn't. We actually, it might be a good idea to have Ket, uh, produce some extra tokens here, just so next turn we do have something, at least. So we got, a uh, brew and a masonry, and hopefully this neighbor moves far enough ahead, uh, that Set can fall back, or Selk can fall back, and, and we can still be together here. Apparently not, though. Uh, what we can do is move our husband a little further ahead with the masonry token. Then use Selk's ingot to make some extra tokens here. And now we're starting to get enough to pr produce a, a good future for our children. So I think we should give them both a irrigation token here. And fairly soon you're going to see what happens uh, between generations. I prefer having a limited amount of children because this actually allows us to... Oh. The child Enmul yelled at Kanika. Later, he broke one of Kanika's toys. I gave you guys both irrigation. What do you want me to do? Uh, my general strategy in the game is to try to... Uh, you make things as copacetic as possible, but that doesn't always work out for the best. Uh, what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to move the husband a little further ahead, up to the, the masonry one here. Uh, we're not going to be able to build any tokens this time, because if I use the ingot on Selk, she'll just fall into the river. But I'm going to save the masonry token and, and give our children... Uh, some resources so they stop fighting each other because god damn that is annoying So we are oh we didn't miss out on those tokens actually which is good We still have a masonry token which we can use uh, and the reason we're gonna do this is to kind of use impetus of love To get a little further ahead actually you know what we shouldn't do that this time what we should just do is have Our man fall back uh, and do some token making which is gonna give us enough to feed our kids uh, And then use the masonry token on the woman which will allow her to continue, like, our cycle of making tokens, basically. And again, we're just going to give one irrigation token to each of our children here. Actually, it might be a better thing to give a brew token here. So we can save this irrigation token and possibly get some legend points on the next turn. Hopefully you're following the mechanics of the game. Well, we're not going to have a chance. But we are going to get some extra tokens here, which is useful. We are masters of irrigation right now. Now she can fall back and make some tokens with us. And I'm basically just going to play through one more generation for now. Because I underestimated the length of time that it would take. We have a ton of irrigation tokens. Thanks for producing a child. 
uh, just as things started to get better for us. But anyway, we're going to get some legend points here. And then I think we should give all children some irrigation. So now we have an A plus irrigator, a B minus, and this will be like C minus. Well, that was a fairly substantial leap forward. So this child is going to be basically where all of our uh, focus is going to lie. Oh my god, stop fighting. You should get along well. Dislikes Kanika. Dislikes Obaris. Dislikes Obaris? He was just born. What's your problem? Oh, I don't get enough attention anymore. Get over it. It's the copper age, man. You got to work together. Life don't care. Please don't produce a child. Thank you. Uh, we are going to move forward again. Again, this is basically just to continue our ability to make tokens. And this time, I think we're going to go like masonry, masonry, irrigation. So all of our kids are being well provided for, despite the fact that they are fighting. Uh, which is a damn shame. The fact that they're fighting is a damn shame, I mean. Uh, and you know what? On this turn, I kind of feel like we just shouldn't do anything. Although that... I know I realize that sounds crazy, but... Here's my thinking. If we wait until another irrigation tile shows up, then I can use irrigation, get impetus of love, and move forward. Uh, so I think I'm just going to spend one irrigation. Oh, he's double A irrigator. That's awesome. And then we have an A plus mason as well. And we're just going to skip to the next turn. I'm not going to make any ingots. We do get some legend points and we get some free tokens via our neighbors, which is great. And that's the end of our generation right here. So this like divided line that you can see marks the end of our generation. So now our guys can go through rites of passage. But first things first, we should try to uh, improve our firstborn as much as possible. We should try to improve all our kids as much as possible, really. Uh, but improving our firstborn is the most important. Where does he go with Impetus of Love now? He goes to the limit, I guess. Does that mean he died? I guess so. Uh, but he does love his wife. He's very old. Let's see what we've got going on here with uh, the owl. He is ancient. While the older children ferried straw for making mud bricks, the younger ones kicked the gourd across the dirt. One accidentally kicked it into Ket's face. Ket threw the gourd far away, otherwise ignoring them. Cool. The children moved to play in that direction. Awesome. That's all right, I guess. Um, we are just going to end this turn. The children are going to be pissed because I'm not feeding them, but I really need to invest in our firstborn because that's what's going to push us into this next generation. And that's exactly what I wanted is some brewing tokens uh, there. So we're going to have Ket make some ing or make some tokens here via his ingot. Beautiful. So we have some more irrigation tokens. And we're going to save these for the next generation, basically. Uh, and we're going to just continue on here. Basically, once we get to the limit, we absolutely have to move into the next generation. So we're going to have Ket move backwards again and make some more tokens. And then we'll probably do the Rite of Passage, and that'll mark, likely, the end of the video. We do get the Brew skill up, up to A-. So this child is pretty awesome. A-, double A, and A+. We are going to uh, start the Rite of Passage with Enmul here. So he thought to compete in the race to catch five animals. He and the other boys were told to search the farm for five elders, listen, and bring their stories back the quicker the better. We're going to attempt the right. Uh, okay, so he did it as fast as possible again. So we're going to go with uh, Enmul the Maverick. Again, Tom Cruise style. So we've actually made it to the second generation successfully here. Let's find a mate and then we'll end the video. Because after that point, it's kind of like variations on a theme. Uh, we can't get that one that we're in love with right now. Because she's on a brew token, which we do not have any of. So we might as well move as far ahead as possible for now. And just uh, move up here. Maybe we'll talk to this lady at least. I don't want to have relations with her. Uh, she is a B plus, but the fact that we don't love each other means we won't get that impetus of love bonus. So there is a trade-off there. I'm going to ignore her for now. Plus, that's just the ultimate pickup technique. So we're going to hope that our love moves a little bit further ahead. She's on the brew token again, which I hate. Oh, oh no, she's on our token now. Awesome, she's an A minus, and she asked me to marry her. Sent nay, loved into disaster, sneaking up a window to look upon Enmul. She stumbled and landed in the garden. Mulch that graced Enmul's family home, wiping mud and squash leaves from her face. Sent may withheld a swear. The hand that helped to lift her was gentle. Sent nay looked deep into laughing eyes. Enmul feels loves towards Sent nay. That's awesome. She's a minus, which is great. Uh, we're probably a little bit better than that, but that's okay. You know, it's the copper age. We got to make compromises. We're going to accept here. Uh, and then we're going to fall in love. This is beautiful. We got a loving family relationship. We've got decent resources. We could probably have a child. But in any case, this is where I'm going to stop uh, seven grand steps. This is currently available in its uh, beta demo version for free. So I'll put a link to that in the video description for, for, for sure. Uh, also, IGF nominated for the Nuovo Award, which is for the, the weird games. I believe Dinner Date was nominated a few years ago. I'm trying to think of what was nominated last year, but it's totally slipped off the top of my mind. Basically, the way that there was, this would work, once we found our discovery, we would unlock like new tokens, and then we could use these tokens to kind of progress through these rings. And eventually, I think once you finish this ring, in an hour of play, I only ever got to like the clay ring here. 
Uh, but I think once you get to like this top ring, if you progress past that by getting another discovery, then you enter like the next age. So there's seven ages. So it's a fairly lengthy game. Uh, I, I have a, kind of a soft spot, weirdly enough, for electronic board games or even kind of like games of chance like this, even though there is strategy involved as well. Quite, quite a lot of strategy, in fact. Uh, so I'm having a great time with it so far, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how it progresses towards its string, spring 2013 release. But in any case, this has been Seven Grand Steps again. Free to play in its current state, and I will leave a link to the beta build in the video description. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.